All right, today we're going to go through the blade setup on the uh, MC800P, or known as the joint hog. So, first thing you're going to do, get the wrenches out of the back, and you pull this pin, lift the blade guard up, put the pin back in, and that'll hold it up out of the way. When you get the machine, it's going to have all the flanges already on there. So what we're going to have to do first is remove these. So you remove that nut. You might need to use a 916 wrench. Remove the blade nut. And then set this aside. And then this is going to be your the one and only outer flange. This one's different than the rest of the spacers on there. It's machined on the inside and that helps to remove the nut when it's uh, when it tightens down. Uh, and then it's going to have a flat side. The only the other difference is on this one, it has an uh, inch and a quarter. Everything else is one inch. And that's going to allow your blade nut to go into that little slot right there. And that holds everything steady. You do not want to put it on like that. It has to go inside like that when you put it back together. And we'll show you that in a couple minutes. So we're going to pull all the spacers off. There's two different types of spacers that come with this saw. This is a eighth inch spacer. And it also comes with a set of quarter inch spacers. You can use these in any way that you need to, to get the desired cut that you're looking for. Uh, today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use six of our eight by 150 soft bond blades, and we're gonna use just the eighth inch spacers. And that's gonna give us about an inch and a half wide when we combo all those up together. So this is an upcut saw, so you wanna make sure the blade is set up for this rotation. So there's your arrow there. And you're gonna to wanna to put your first blade all the way in against the inner flange. And these blades will be pretty tight. When the saw is brand new, the shaft is freshly machined. These are gonna be a little bit tight to, to fit on there they should go on fairly easily. All right, once you have all your blades on to your desired thickness, you can start loading the rest of the spacers on there just to take up this space. You need to get it enough spacers where you get to the threads so you can tighten it down properly. You might not use all the spacers, especially depending on if you're going to run a little bit more blades than this. Okay, so you see we have three spacers left. So we're just going to set these aside. This is a pretty typical width that you're going to be doing, about an inch and a half. Uh, you can go, you know, quite a bit wider if you need to, but a typical joint repair is only going to need an inch and a half to two inches. All right, so now, once you get here again, here's the outer flange. You want to make sure that machined face goes to the inside. And then you see how it's loose on there? That's where the, the little uh, edge on that, that nut is going to make up for that. So you just want to kind of hold it and make sure that that guides in there correctly. And then once it's in there tight, what you're going to do, leave this bolt on a flat edge right there. And then you can take this nut and tighten that on there. If, you, if this is at an angle, it's not, going to, it's not going to tighten. It has to be on the flat side. And then it's, it goes right on. So then once you got that on, you take your 9 16 wrench. And you're just gonna snug that up for now. You're gonna take your blade wrenches. One of them goes on the back side here. There's a flat spot where that wrench fits on. And then you can just use the ground as a, as a brace. And then just. And just tighten that up. It's uh, standard threads on this, righty tight. And then just 
good and snug. It doesn't have to be too tight. You don't want to make it too tight because you'll never be able to get it off. It's tightening as it's cutting. And then once you get your main blade nut secured, come back and check this one. Just make sure that one's tight too. Okay. And then that's it. You're ready to go. Okay. Setting the depth of cut on your joint hog, you're going to notice one thing. When you turn this, it's very, very stiff. And the reason it's like that is so it doesn't unwind or rewind as you're cutting due to vibration. So what you're going to do, put a little bit of down pressure on the handle and then it frees that up for, so you can crank that down. All right, when you're setting the depth on your joint hog, what you're going to do, lower it down so that the blades are just barely touching the concrete when it's in its down position, okay? So now you raise it back up and now your, your depth control handle, you're going to rotate this one rotation is exactly a quarter of an inch of depth. So if you want to go a half inch, you do two rotations. And then as you as you lower it down, as you're cutting, that's going to cut a half inch deep down. 